Well, hey, and welcome back to Heimlich History. Now, we've been working through Unit 8 of AP World History. In the last few videos, we've been talking about the Cold War. And what we've said is that the chief battle of the Cold War was not with bullets and swords and guns, but rather it was whether or not the world would be remade into the image of capitalism or remade into the image of communism. And in this video, we're going to see how communism was making gains in the world during that period. So if you're ready to get your brain cows milked, I stand at the ready. Let's get to it. So we're talking about the spread of communism in the 20th century. And in this respect, we're going to first look at how it worked out in China, and then we're going to see all around the world how land reform movements were carried out. All right, first, communism in China. So starting in 1927, there was a bitter conflict between the Chinese communists and the Chinese nationalists over who would control China. But in 1931, Japan went ahead and invaded northern China. And so by 1935, the communists and the nationalists put their conflict aside for a minute and united to deal with the Japanese. Now, if you're paying attention to dates, you'll recognize that we are right on the eve at this point of World War II. And so once World War II was over and the Japanese had been defeated, the communists and the nationalists went right back to fighting over who would control China. And the Chinese Civil War did go on during World War II also, but it's hard to tell where one stops and one begins. Regardless, as it turns out, the communists won and had themselves a nice communist revolution in China. Chairman Mao Zedong stood in Tiananmen Square in 1949 and proclaimed the founding of the People's Republic of China. And under Mao's leadership, China nationalized its industry and redistributed land to peasants. Now, Mao's major reform program was called the Great Leap Forward, and under that program, peasant lands were collectivized by the state. Now, you may recall that Stalin did this very thing in Russia, and because of all the rebellion that occurred because of it, many, many, many millions of people died as a result of famine and starvation. And so Chairman Mao, not interested in such rebellions, established a place to send all the people who were rebelling, and they were called re-education camps. These were emphatically not the kind of camps where you go to swim in a lake, and make keychain dongles. No, these were internment camps, and if you got sent there, you were put under intense physical strain, intense psychological reordering, in order that you might believe, deep down in your guts, that Mao's policies were good and right. And if the re-education didn't work, they killed you. So all this to say, the Great Leap Forward was actually a great disaster of a policy. One reason for this is that harvests failed in staggering numbers during this period. But Mao couldn't let it appear to the world that his policies were failing, and so he went ahead and kept exporting the grain that they did grow to far off places. As a result of that, 20 million Chinese people died. Okay, so that's how communism is working out in China. Now let's turn our attention to land reform all throughout the world. And first we'll start in Iran, and Iran had kind of a tumultuous start to the 20th century. During World War to the Iranian Shah made it clear that he would support Hitler. And so, this being an untenable situation to the Allies, Britain and Russia went ahead and invaded Iran and set up a new Shah sympathetic to their interests. Now, you're probably tempted to believe that the Iranians loved that situation, but you would be wrong. And so, in 1951, the Iranian nationalists overthrew that Shah and established their own prime minister in 1953. Britain and Russia then engineered a plan to overthrow that guy and put their own guy back in power, and they did. His name was Muhammad Reza Pahlavi. He was an authoritarian and harsh in his policies, but he did lead Iran into some good policies like social welfare and women's suffrage. But we're here to talk about land reform and Pahlavi reform some land, baby. It was called the White Revolution, not because white people carried it out, but because it was bloodless. Under this policy, the government forcibly bought land from wealthy landowners and then resold it to the peasants at a fraction of the price. And it helped some for sure, but it really missed many of the people who would have benefited from it. Okay, now let's look at land reform in Asia and Africa. First, Vietnam. After World World War II, Vietnam declared its independence from Japan, who occupied it during the war, and from France, who colonized it before the war. Communists came to power in North Vietnam, and they went ahead and seized land from landowners and redistributed it to the poor. Second, let's see how this worked out in India. India became an independent state in 1947 after having thrown off the shackles of British colonialism. And they also instituted land reform, but with mixed success. But one place where it was very successful in India was the state of Kerala. In 1963, tenants gained the right to purchase land and in 1969, laws were passed that allowed tenants to have full ownership of their land. Okay, third, let's go over to Africa and see how land reform is working out in Ethiopia. In 1974, Mengistu Haile Mariam led an overthrow of the Ethiopian government, which, in his estimation, was nothing but a puppet of Western powers. The rebellion was successful, and so he established a socialist government in place of the Western puppet government. Of course, the Soviet Union was delighted by such a move, and Ethiopia received much support from the Russians. And under this new government, like the others we can considered, land redistribution was a high priority, but like most of the other places we considered, it resulted in famine and failed economic policies and much brutality from Marion. And now, if you'll permit me to get a little sentimental, let me tell you seven things every kid needs to hear. Number one, I love you. 
Number two, I'm proud of you. Number three, I'm sorry. Number four, I forgive you. Number five, I'm listening. Number six, communism has failed every time it was tried. And number seven, you've got what it takes. All right, that's what you need to know about Unit 8, Topic 4 of AP World History. Unfortunately, neither your teachers nor the college board redistributes grades like the communists redistribute land. So if you want to do well in your class and on your exam in May, then grab a review packet right here. Also, if you want more videos like this, then subscribe, and I'll keep making them for you. Heimler out.